Hey, hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Tyrion Copper Attorney of the Arcane. I am Wise Mirror, and we were just about to start the second case of the game. Case 205. Let let me go. I'm not going anywhere until I see her. Uh, I'm sorry, Wallace, but she's already passed. There was nothing more they could have done. How? This academy teaches the best mages in the kingdom. Are you telling me they couldn't do anything? Her condition was much worse than we thought. The kingdom's magic isn't advanced enough to treat something like this. Lucio Steelwind can rain meteors from the sky. William Frega can teleport entire caravans across the continent. Are you telling me that your mages couldn't cure one disease? I'm sorry, I truly am. Emily. Episode 2. The Walking Dead. Ooh, necromancy. I'm sorry, Celeste, but there's no way out of this. And Celeste, the attention is sharply focused on the chessboard between you two. You can see her eyes dart from piece to piece. Just, just give me a second. I can still win this. And Celeste, there's no way for you to avoid checkmate next turn. Just surrender. And she ignores you and continues staring at the pieces. There, what about that? Checkmate. Damn it. Would you two keep it down? We are in the library. Miss Tamora glances at the chessboard. I hope you didn't spend the entire morning playing around. I, I've been working hard, Ruby. I've already learned two new spell formulas since we got here. Hmm. Well, at least there's that. What about you, Cuthbert? Um, um, well... Your flustered stammering tells her exactly how much progress I couldn't find any books about the subject we've been looking into. You've been... You've spent the entire day filming me through the Kingdom's Imperial Library, researching the Eye of Horus. During Celeste's trial, you awakened a new ability that you never used before. Up until then, you thought that the eye could only see surface level thoughts. But during that moment with Garrett Pierce, the eye of Horus was empowered. And you could see far more than you could. You told Miss Tomorrow about what happened, and it made you both wonder what was hidden or what other hidden abilities the eye might have. You both decided it, it's time to find out more about the Eye and its origins. This library supposedly held the kingdom's entire knowledge of magic and the arcane arts. But you couldn't find a single mention of any ability like the Eye. Does the kingdom seriously lack knowledge about it? Or do we need to look somewhere else? Are you 
tell me... Are you sure you can't tell me what you're researching? I've traveled around the world and I might have... I might have seen something like it. You entertain the thought for a moment, but you haven't known her for very long. The Eye of Horus is a supernatural ability that can't be detected by a spell compendium. You've always been wary about what the kingdom might do to you if they ever found out about it. So, sorry, it's not something I can talk of, I can really talk about. I'm... If I had to guess, I would say that they are looking into supernatural phenomena. Uh... You and Celeste nearly jump out of your chairs. You look over to where the voice came from. She appears to be a student at the academy. How long was she there? You didn't notice her presence at all. You also feel like she looks oddly familiar. I'm terribly sorry, but I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. As the girl as the girl approaches your table, you see an aura student frantically running after her. Uh, Eris, you can't just... I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine, Wallace. I'm sorry, but who are you two? Sorry, that was incredibly rude of me. My name is Eris Ilmater. Ilmater. I am seeing the D&D influences here. Occupation? Student. And this is Wallace Nightgrave. We're both students here. Uh, uh hi. Not to be rude, but that was a private conversation. Just how much of it did you hear? Hmm, I wonder. Reading about the supernatural is actually a hobby of mine. I might be able to help you with your research, Mr. Cuthbert. And what makes you so sure of it, that, and, and what makes you so sure of that is what we were investigating. Mr. Cuthbert has ha a bad habit of muttering to himself when he thinks. I assume that his research had something to do with the supernatural. You feel a piercing side glance from Tamora. You avoid eye contact with her. But, but anyways, do you mind if I ask a few, you a few questions? Of course, I'd be happy to help. Fine, I suppose it won't hurt. What was that effect just now? Just remember to show some discretion, Tyrion. Right. So, you two are students at the Imperial Academy. Yes. I'm currently studying illusion magic. Illusions. That's the kind of magic that lets you turn invisible, right? Technically, yes. But a few mages, but few mages ever reached a level high enough for that. I'm a bit embarrassed to admit that I'm not able to cast invisibility. That's still pretty cool. What about you, Wolves? I, I, uh, um, Wallace has his own unique field of study. It's probably not your place to pry. Everyone is talking about you two. R really? 
it's it's rare for a uh, school to let any outsiders in. That makes sense. The library isn't exactly open to the public. You were only able to access it because of Miss Tamora's connections. We only ever get occasional visits from noble houses. So I was curious as to who was able to break this dull monotony. Well, well, I'm a mercenary, but now I work as Tyrion's bodyguard. M mercenary? After her trial, it turned out that Celeste was more than capable of affording her, of, of affording her services. However, Miss Tamora will still propose a different arrangement. According to Garrett Pierce, he, after indicting Garrett Pierce, you painted a large target on your back. With Celeste being a mercenary, Miss Tamora decided to hire her as your bodyguard. She figured you would be you would feel more comfortable around someone you were already friends with. And you as I'm a defense attorney. A defense attorney. <clears throat> My apologies, it's just not what I was expecting. What's that supposed to mean? Supernatural phenomena. I wonder why you would be researching such a thing. Yeah, I, I want to know too. Uh, I'm sorry, I, but I can't really say. For Garglets, there are many spells in this world. So why are you so convinced that this phenomenon wasn't produced by a spell? What we're looking into doesn't seem to follow the classic rules of magic. Oh, how so? Please tell me. It was created by someone who's not a mage. Really? So, you're saying that this was something created by a person? The words came out of your mouth before you realized. You send a small apologetic look to Miss Tamora. Hmm. That does remind me of a story. A story? Mr. Cuthbert. Do you know the legend about how the kingdom of whatever God was created? Do you mean the story about the ancient dragons? The ancient what? Does Wyvern Guard have a story about ancient dragons? It's only about one ancient dragon, the Church of Bahamut refers to him as the Scale Lord. Okay, yeah, definite D&D &D, uh, references. <laughs> uh, Bahamut. Bahamut and Illmater. I'm sure you've heard, even heard of, a, of people. I'm sure you've even heard people mention him before. Legends say that the first mages were created centuries ago by him. At that time, our kingdom was caught in the middle of a brutal war. With no way to defend themselves, the kingdom was on the brink of destruction. Our people prayed to Bahamut, the god of dragons, for salvation. And Almost as if to answer their prayers, Rebellion, the last scaled horde, appeared before them. The scaled horde bestowed the gift of magic on a band of heroes who were fighting on the front lines. With their magic, those heroes utterly overtook the kingdom's enemies 
and single-handedly won the war. It's said that these heroes went on to form the noble houses of today. Hmph. <laughs> what a load of nonsense. That story is nothing but religious propaganda to prop up the noble houses. Regardless of the insignificance of this legend, is in uh, regardless the significance of this legend is in the scale for himself. You mean Rebellion? Rebellion bestowed the power to become a mage on several individuals. And to this day, that power can only be passed down genetically. Can you think of an arcane spell that can produce something like that? No, I suppose not. Rebellion must have had powers that weren't bound by the rules of the arcane arts. In other words, he could create supernatural phenomenon without the rules of magic. Please, you expect us to believe a story like that? It's completely unrealistic. As unrealistic as a non-mage with using supernatural powers. She has a point. It's a far-fetched theory, but it's honestly the closest you have to a lead right now. Um... Of course it would be you not making all this noise. Suddenly, a woman who appears to be an instructor approaches you. She looks upon each of you with equal amount of disdain. B -b -b Professor Bellwetter. Catherine Bellwetter. Occupational Professor, that is, Professor Bellwether to you, I believe that's what he called you. But didn't he just call you? I knew you were letting a rebel into our walls. <coughs> I know, I knew letting you rebel into our walls would lead to nothing but trouble. You've even started associating with our malcontents. The headmaster gave us express permission to be here. If you have an issue with that, take it up with him. Hm. I'll have you know that I was on my way to do just that. Wallace? Yes, 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 yes. yes. How am I supposed to understand you when you're stuttering? Yes, Professor Bellwether. Straighten out your uniform and fix that awful hair. You look like a street urchin. But I suppose it's unreasonable to expect anything more. And as for you, I'll be on my way. There was that effect again. What a bitch. So, Celeste. Oh, come on. We were all thinking it. Anyways. With that out of the way, we sh shall we begin? Why do you keep protecting fear from Celeste? Wallace, you finished this week's assignment, haven't you? I'm suspicious of this girl with the last name of the book. Whose last name is the name of the uh, play the Lord from the NP. Would 
Would you mind uh, helping Celeste with her research? Uh, um, I don't know. Why don't you mention it? I could really use some help finding a specific spell for me all. You know your way around here, right, Wallace? Um, um, uh, okay. So, don't worry, Miss Tamora. I'll be more cheerful from now on. Please do. I still have some business to take care of here. So I'll leave you all to it. You spend the next few hours searching for the library's books with Eris. You hadn't thought to look into the ancient dragons, and the library had books about them in abundance. There was one problem, though. There are a lot of myths and stories about the ancient dragons, but it's pretty hard to, to it's pretty difficult to tell that from fiction with these accounts. It can't be helped. The Church of Bahamut is the dominant religion of our kingdom. We have the bones of dragons displayed in museums, but those bones are only widely known are the only widely known evidence of the dragon's existence. Except for Rafalian, possibly. I wonder if he's still alive, like you said. I wouldn't be surprised. Despite everything, our government's constitution still includes him in our government. Wait, really? As the savior of our kingdom, he and his kin were given an honorary position in our po on our political hierarchy. The ancient dragon's authority technically rivals that of King Olivia. Oh, wow. I had no idea. How have I never heard of this before? To be honest, that law um, is just a way to revere him and appease the church. Well, Rafalian, it wouldn't possibly be any worse than the nobility. Uh, ah. You're so stuck in your own thoughts that you accidentally bump into a bookshelf. The shelf begins to tip over and you're able to catch it before it fully falls over. But not before several books fall out from their shelves. They hit the ground with a cacophony. Some students glance in your direction. Be quiet! So, sorry. Be quiet! Eris begins giggling. She, she seems amused by what's happening. Hey, are you okay? I heard a loud... Whoa! You heard a loud low, yes. Well, Celeste stares at the pile of fallen books. I can't make that noise. What did you... Do. I... I don't... Wow. Tyrion is clumsy. <laughs> uh, forget that. Just help me clean this up. Uh, there's uh, no need for that. Construct? I require assistance. Acknowledged. Uh, wh what? Upon Eris's command, one of the nearby suits of armor suddenly springs to life and begins walking toward you. The voice coming out of him sounds human, but lacks emotion. Why does it sound familiar? Wait, did you do that, Eris? Yes, this is an arcane construct. It's a suit of armor that's animated using artificery. They're designed to carry out various tasks for the, uh, for the students. Arcane constructs. 
has been added to your notes. Really, I didn't know anything like that existed. They're still experimental, so they aren't available to the public yet. Well, that being said, Construct, please place these books back where they belong. Acknowledge. On Eris's command, the Construct begins quickly picking up the books. It moves with an inhuman efficiency. After only a few seconds, all of the books are back on their shelves. Wow. So, they do whatever you tell them to do? Well, there are some limits to... Construct, tell me that I'm the fairest man you've ever seen. Command, uh, command rejected. Oh, what? I guess they're not allowed to lie. You feel a sharp pain in your side as Celeste quickly jabs you. The Construct's voice is a series of pre-recorded messages. I'm not sure if you noticed, but it uses the voice of Professor Pelwen, meaning I'm giving them the wrong voice entirely. Unfortunately, you can't make them say anything other than what's recorded. Only the Headmaster can change those settings. Artificery can record audio. Artificery can record audio. I've never seen anything like it. But you just said they're experimental, right? Maybe if I keep asking it, it it'll just give up and do it. I would advise against that. Even if it, even if the commands are rejected, they're still stored in the Construct's command logs. Anyways, we should probably get back to work. Fine. You read more about the ancient dragons, but most of the stories read more like fables than actual historical accounts. Hmm. I don't think I'm- I don't feel like I'm making any progress. Suddenly you hear a thunderous, low-pitched sound blare across the room. Yeah, that one. It sounds like a high-pitched horn. Yeah, I can see that, but with its volume turned up to a unnatural levels. What? What? Celeste, do you hear that? Well, how can I not? What is that? You didn't touch anything you weren't supposed to, right? What? Of course not. It finally stopped. Uh, Eris, wasn't that the lockdown system? Yes, I believe so. Lockdown system. The Academy is outfitted with a large artificery system. In a state of emergency, it will erect magical barriers throughout the building state of emergency. Should we be worried? Don't worry. The lockdown is designed to keep everyone safe. We're safe as long as the barriers are up. But Miss Tamora, yeah, she said she was going to do something on campus. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. You hear a disembodied voice echo through the library. It sounds like they're being like it's being projected magically. It it's the headmaster. He's using the intercom system. A body has been discovered. Uh right. Next time on 
let's play Tyrion and Cuthbert, Attorney of the Arcane. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. 